glad to see you here. Well, you know, I'm glad to be here. We've been sitting here having a glass of wine waiting on you. We have. Really? We have. Well, oh, it's you, gone now. Well, you drank all. Yeah, we've been waiting we must quite have been some good. time for you. <laughs> well, I'm here. Good. Let's get this party this started. This is great. This is Henschke wine. But Henschke. This is, this is my friend Keith. Oh, that's right. This is my friend Brian. And, and this I'm is their our friend, friend. Ayla. <laughs> Ayla from Negociants, which is a big import company here in the United States. Import mainly um, Australian wines and it's negotiantsusa.com. And the wine we're talking about today is Henschke. I, I, you know, from what I hear, you know, I know the Henschke name a little bit, but Henschke, we're talking Henschke and Grange. We're talking like Penfolds, upper end stuff. Henschke is like right there with them. I mean, you know, cult it, wine from Australia. They yes. have a level of yeah. wine that is that is up there. Exactly, yes. not this particular Penfolds one, but right. Right. not right. today. But interesting enough, Next time. I, Next I time. don't think. Yeah, how can we do it this time? <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do they do they do the twist off cap on the their top end? Uh, no. This past vintage, there was rumor that they were going to, but they did not. Which but is interesting. It's very possible that it'll come down the pike. A lot of people think, oh no no no, you don't take a wine like that and you're going to put it in a still vin closure or uh, you know a, a what? twist a what closure? Still vin closure. Still vin closure. What's or that? A, a twist off cap like this. What's a still vin closure? It's this. Oh, it's, it's a twist off cap. Where'd they come up with that name, man? It's the guy who holds the patent. Oh, right? John Stillman. Right. John Stillman. <laughs> like, he knows him, right? Um, Talked to him last week. But my point in this is that Plump Jack is a wine that yeah. is, how much is that now? 200 bucks a bottle? Oh, yeah. 220 gets up there. Yeah. And people are shocked to say, what? You, you, you've got 200 bucks and it's a bottle that's. Hey. It's the wave it's, of the future, baby. It's, you know, but it's the wave of the future, but it's been common knowledge for winemakers for the past 30 years or more Absolutely. to know that the best hermetic seal for wine is the steel of enclosure. Right. Um, but, you know, the stigma for the Americans or for most consumers, actually, um, is that this has got to be cheap wine if it's got a twist off cap. And no. that's just not the that's case. Because this is like $40 on the shelf. Yes, it is. Um, well, this one is because it's the. Well, if I was state. if I was a Barossan, I'd say Canton, but I'm American, so I say Canton. But that just helps me get along. <laughs> <laughs> right. But this um, is a blend from Barossa. And it's a blend of. It's a blend of Shiraz, Cabernet, Merlot, Cab Franc, and Grenache. And the vintage is. 2004. And the website name is. Uh, Henschke.com, I believe. Okay. So <laughs> you I... tell me you were just there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I believe, yes, I believe. Um, Henschke.com.au. Right. Yeah, we'll have Australia. it linked up right right below yeah. the video. There's a link. It pops up. Right here. See that right there on the screen? Right. Actually, it's right over here. <laughs> right about along, here. along with the actual percentages of the blend. Exactly. So that I don't have to read the bottle. Exactly. Camera. So Henschke. So, you know, this again, that cult wine thing. Cult you know, wine. we're talking about it here at DenverWineGuys.com. And, um, so it's a fifth generation family. Yep. It's a husband and wife team. It's Stephen Henschke is the winemaker and Prue, his wife, is a viticulturalist. So, okay. um, you know, there's a lot of rich history in the Barossa Valley. What's what's the predominant Ooh. grape in this? Because I'm, I'm sticking my nose in this and I, I haven't tasted it. Right. I already love this wine, and I want to say we're going to have it, to talk percentages here. Is is it Syrah? It, it is. I was going to say Shiraz. It is. It's thirty nine percent yeah. Shiraz, twenty four percent Cab, twenty three Merlot, nine Cab Franc, and five Grenache. And this That's is mouthful. such a wine you have to ask for. And actually, if you go to if you're looking below on the video, there's a thing called WineSearcher.com. You can click that on, and it'll show you stores in the country that carry it. But um, two thousand four, I think the current vintage is two thousand five. But um, but this kind of stuff stays around in the market for a while. So you have to ask your retailer for it. You do. Is, and it also it? tells you, shows you that um, you know, Shiraz wines wow. are very ageable, especially under a screw cap, because this is a five-year-old wine, and it's, I think, exactly. really delicious, yeah. personally. It may not have the romance when you click it, like a cork does, but you know. Well, you know, one of the reasons why um, the winemakers have used till then closure is because, you know, if you got an age-worthy wine, and you've got it sitting in the, your cellar 30, 40, 50 years, all of a sudden, hey, this is the day we're gonna open this wine, just to find out, oh my God, the cork's been bad since right. the day we put it in, or right. five faulty five years later, and you've waited 30 years to open a bottle of wine, still then, you know what you get in the bottle is what was put in. Well, it was what was put into that bottle, not altered, but 
um, there is some micro oxidization that takes place. I won't bore you with all those details, but um, yeah, you, you know the wine's not going to go bad on you because of a cork. I get so tons of Bing cherry on it mm -hmm. in the mouth. Have you tasted it yet? Yeah, yeah. there's. I it's love. It's really this complex. Wine. This is yeah. one of those wines. Like tomorrow, mm -hmm. it's going to be over the top. It's out of, out of this world. I think it's over the top now. It is. I mean, it's really so, complex and um, does it? So let's talk about the wine a little bit. Does it see any oak? It does see. It does see some uh, Do we know how French much? and American oak. Okay. About eighteen months. Yeah, I don't think it's. You, you pick that up, but I don't think it's overdone. Mm -hmm. I think there's a good balance with the oak and it's the fruit. Very well balanced because you yeah. get all those blackberry dense um, cassis flavors, which is surprising that I'm getting cassis, but I'm getting it out of there. But um, these deep dark, um, you know, uh, fleshy fruits coming across with that echoing of wood. So, like you say, it's not overpowering, but it just adds another layer of complexity to the wine. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really enjoying this wine. And one it's, thing we didn't really talk about, but we've talked about, but not directly, is just the differences in region. The cool climate varieties and the, you know, the, the not all Australian or Barossa wines are just super big and overripe and over lush. There's some beautiful elegance to these wines. And this oh, yeah. one, I think, is a, it is a perfect example of, of, of that style. It's and, serious. And, and that's, that's a good point that, that is brought up because I think a lot of, not the average consumer, but people who kind of think of themselves as wine geeks think of Australian wines as being big fruit bombs. And even though the, the fruit is here, there is a certain amount of elegance Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, good balance, good acid, all together. And a lot of good herbal notes coming across. I mean, it's still, yeah, it's like layered. It's like layer cake. I mean, it's just layered with stuff, you know, from front to back. It's just like so complex and so deep and so robust. I mean, I was so, like lay this down for like 10 or 15 years. Yeah, and it, you could, and you could. You easily. could, yeah, easily. you definitely could. Easily. But I wouldn't lay it down for that long. <laughs> right. I'd be drinking it right now. <laughs> like we are. It's this is good. delicious. Yeah, and you, I mean, you, you can decant it, I mean, for mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really want to do that right now. Yeah. Decant it, really aerate it. If see. you're really nice to me, I'll leave you the bottle and you can try. Sweet. Well, then I gotta fight him for it. Right. <laughs> well, you know. So you, you brought two bottles, right? <laughs> <laughs> Three bottles, because opening one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Henschke, so it's Henschke. Henschke.com.au. That's the Australian thing. That is because the Australian we're, thing. Because we're running out of time. Right. Yes. We're gonna You're have gonna to rate it. We're gonna have to rate it. Yeah. 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 $40 on the shelf, probably, probably 38 to, probably, it's probably more like 38 to 50. Yeah. And sometimes these wines. Yeah, that's true. It's 2004. It's vintage, kind of out of the market in stores, probably. So when you when you find it, it's, somebody's had it for a bit, so they're going to maybe charge you a little bit more for it. So um, I think it's your turn. I think it is. 93 points. Ah, I was going to see 93 points with a Best Buy. <laughs> oh, you're putting a Best Buy on it? I am. Can you put a Best Buy on a $40 wine? Um, well, you, you just did. No, 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 no. Um, let's see, 93 plus or yeah. Right. Well, Best there's, Buy is there's, fine. There's, yeah, there's a. Uh, you're saying that forty dollars this is a steal. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think it rivals stuff in the hundred dollar range. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Or um, I Seriously. can think of a handful of wines in the sixty eighty dollar. Right. This, uh, if you you put it in a in a tasting with it. Yep. It wouldn't be a ringer wine. No, you right. would think it's right up there with the other wines that are eighty bucks. If you love wine and you and you are a serious wine collector or you're just serious about wine, you will love this one. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And, and everything um, that they make is just yeah. stunning. And we're gonna get some more of the wines on DenverWineGuys.com here. Um, we'd like to thank Water to Wine, right? Water to Wine for letting us come in. Absolutely. At watertowine.com slash Denver. Um, thanks to Derek and we'd like to thank Ayla for for treating us with these guys. Oh yeah, I mean, it's so nice that she brought those brought this by. Um, Negotiants, negotiantsusa.com, and I think that about wraps it up. I think so. Do I want to thank you for being here with me? Sure, thank me. We have to do the DenverWineGuys.com thing. We do have to do that. She's Ayla. I'm Brian. <laughs> He's huh? Keith. And we are DenverWineGuys.com. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. I don't have my glasses. Oops. <laughs>